An anthropologist working in New York is among the scientists making shamanism accessible to the West. Variously a visiting professor at Yale, Berkeley and Columbia universities, Dr. Michael Harner also has the unique advantage of having been personally initiated by South American Indians. He leads his students into a trance-like state from which the inner journey of the shaman can begin. To journey into what is called the upper world or the lower world, and making these journeys with a particular purpose, the person is able to get information to puzzling questions, knowledge that normally only comes rarely to other people. I have This is the dream time of the Australian Aboriginals. This is the mythic time of the shaman, outside of time. Realms that are normally reserved for those approaching death or for saints. I think we're entering something which surprisingly is universal regardless of culture. Certainly people are influenced by their own history, their own cultural history, their individual history. But we're beginning to discover a map of the upper world, of the lower world, regardless of culture. The drum beat is something like a carrier wave that carries the shaman along in the journey to the upper world or the lower world. It excludes external stimuli of ordinary reality. It focuses the mind in a certain way. So with the drum, one is able to enter realms that other people may strive for years through silent meditation to achieve. I went down a couple of levels and then went even further to some area that was very gray and slimy and foggy. And I walked through that for a while and found another opening and went down even further. It was some place I'd never been before, and it was kind of like a cave, and there were some beings in there, but I couldn't quite make out what they were. And I was just kind of sitting there with them, and all of a sudden they came at me with knives and tore me apart into all these pieces and tore my flesh off. And I was startled, but it didn't hurt. I made a, a journey to the upper world, and I visited my teacher. She took me up through her vagina, actually took me into her and took me into her belly. I could feel her, feel her get pregnant with me and felt her belly stretching. I felt myself inside her. I also felt her put, put her hands on top of the, her belly and, and how large, large it was. Uh, she told me that I should stop breathing, that I should take nourishment from her and I could actually feel myself stop breathing. I felt a lot of warmth in my belly as if it was coming into me. And uh, she then stretched further and actually broke apart. Her belly broke apart and I came out of her. And I took it to mean that I, I needed to use less will in, in my work, that, that uh, I needed to trust her more and let that enter into my daily life. In this spirit canoe, uh, the people are organized in the outline of a boat, and in the center is the patient and the shaman. Together, the whole group is journeying down into the lower world, helping the shaman search for the lost power animal, that is, the guardian animal, and catching and obtaining that power and bringing it back. <laughs> and then the patient is asked to dance the animal, to greet it, to make it welcome, to help the patient's health. The 
have been very few scientific studies so far on what happens to a shaman making the journey. But in one research project that was done, it was found that the shaman in just 10 minutes of journeying achieved a state of consciousness uh, that had only been duplicated once before, and that was by Japanese Zen masters in deep meditation after six hours of work. Things like music and dance are helpful for getting into altered states because they get around the barrier that ordinary consciousness poses. If I had to characterize the main thing about our ordinary state of mind, I'd say it's verbal. Ordinary consciousness is a matter of thinking, talking to yourself constantly. It's think, 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 remember, think, plan, fantasy, remember, think, 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 think. And all those words form a barrier to sensing other aspects of mental functioning. in the vocabulary of 20th century men. How do you banish these dark images from the soul? Some do it through art. H.R. Giger is the creator of the alien and perhaps the greatest occult artist of his time. At his studio in Switzerland, he releases the darkness within himself by transforming it into something which all the world can see. Your the ideas, they come sometimes from dreams or from, um, from bad things. And uh, I go to realize it and then I work it out. It's like a kind of exorcism. Mostly people look at my paintings for the first time. They are a little bit uh, disturbed and they think that I'm completely crazy. Images in my paintings are evil, but you can't say that I'm evil. That's just the, the paradise for me, it's the hell. I like women very much, uh, but I'm afraid of sometimes. I'm afraid about suffering. Women make me often suffering so much that I stopped and maybe I work it out on, on the painting. Plenty of sex symbols and the death is in my painting so much and so often that I uh, I can't see it and sometimes if it's too heavy my mother tell me please go to change this a little bit because she feels shame about her son and I feel shame because she feels and so I go to change. With my art, I just want to survive. 